Oh, man. Am I glad to see you guys? It's fine. How are you doing? You want some ice cream? We got... No, no, man. Listen, something horrible's happened. I need your help. Well, what are you talking about? What's wrong? There's no time to explain. There's clowns going around killing people. I know people have phobias of clowns. I never have had that. You know, must not be in my, like, you know, DNA or something, because I know so many people that are freaked out by clowns. Look, at least take me over to Debbie's house, okay? I think she's in danger. Does she have any roommates? Yes, she's got two. She's got two beautiful roommates with big boobs. I mean, I guess if I saw one coming at me with a, you know, a meat cleaver or something like that, I would probably be scared of them, but not in general. I mean, I just thought they were cool. What, what are, are we, we waiting for? <laughs> I grew up in a in a family. My mom was an actress, uh, and uh, but I, you know, my dad, because he was married to an actress, kind of pushed the boys more into sports and stuff like that. So I didn't really get into it when I was a kid. But but uh, when I was about 17 years old, literally, I was waiting tables while going to UCLA, and somebody walked up and said, and said, uh, "Can you do this? Would you want you want to be in a movie?" And so I just thought I would do it for the fun of it. And um, the movie never happened, but I started taking some acting classes. And I got bit by the bug, and uh, you know, while I was going to UCLA as an econ major, about a year later, I, I got my first part in this little horror movie called New Year's Evil. In, in terms of horror, I've never really been a, a huge fan of of Slice and Dicem, like you know, the, the the kind of torture porn, bloody stuff. I mean, of course, I saw all all of the all of the, you know, the Friday the 13th and everything, because you would just go, like, you know what I mean? It would be Friday night and everybody would go, oh, the new Friday the 13th, but I always kind of cr cringed every time that arrow would come up through the bunk bed or something. Um, but I loved uh, all the really, um, you know, the spooky, scary kind of omen, uh, exorcist, uh, you know, that was more my vibe and stuff. Um, and then, but then I've always loved, uh, I've, I always loved the kind of weird, you know, toxic, you know, Sam Raimi, Toxic Avenger. Because that's, I never really thought any of that stuff was really scary. I just thought it was freaking weird and cool. You know what I mean? And I loved kind of comic booky, weird, cool stuff. And, and uh, when I saw, when I read the script of Killer Clowns, I just went, like, this is, this is just weird, you know? And I liked it because it was so, it was so t completely unique. And I, I, I never, Killer Clowns to me has scary moments and people are scared of clowns but it's not really a scary movie. I mean, I don't even know what you'd categorize it as. It's like horror, sci-fi, somewhat com comedy, right? I mean, it's its own unique brand. Look at this place. It smells like candy. I had been doing a soap for a few years and I just left the soap. Um, and I was, the first movie that I was offered when I was off the soap was the sequel to Hard Bodies, which is a movie that I'd started right before I went on the soap. And I went to a cast reading of it and I just didn't think it was funny. You know, I was sitting around the, ca the table and, the, you know, I I'd actually I had a falling out with the director, writer and everything like that who were really good friends of mine because they said, oh, you come and do it? And I said, yeah, sure. And I sat around the table reading it and like everybody else was so into it. And they were like, oh, this is great. And I was like, you know, feeling like the person there that didn't, that didn't speak Japanese or something. Like I'm going, this, there's nothing in this is funny. And why do you want to make a sequel to Hard Bodies unless it's as funny or funnier than the original? So I was really bummed and I, uh, you know, that didn't work out. And then I had another guy that I knew that offered me the lead in this movie. Um, it was kind of a, remember when they were making all those kind of like American Ninja type movies? Um, uh, and it was, but it was, so it was kind of like that, you know, you're going to be, you're gonna be like the next martial arts franchise guy. But it was, it was, you have to go to South Africa and shoot. And there was a whole period of time when they were shooting movies in South Africa, and, but it, it was the way of getting, uh, I think, you know, apartheid money out of the country. But I, f I felt like, God, I can't do that either because, you know, it kind of went against my basic, basic moral beliefs to go and help, uh, you know, that apartheid situ situation. And, um, 
So then I was looking for something else to do and I'd auditioned for a few things like mask and I didn't get it, you know, and I was like, shit, what am I gonna do? And then all of a sudden my agent sent me this script and I read it and I was like, what the hell is this? And I read it again and I started just to think to myself, wow, this is really, really cool and trippy. Um, and so it was like the first movie I did when I was, when I was off the soap and, uh, you know, I mean, I think we all thought we were doing something that we didn't know what it was, but we kind of knew that there was something potentially special about it because it was so different and so weird. Um, and for me, it was my first time doing anything that was in that kind of effects thing. And I, I loved working with the Kyotos and, uh, you know, I got cast in that movie months before we, we went into production, which is very unusual for an actor. You know, usually you don't get to come on till the final thing. Uh, but it was really cool because we got to go, you know, they would invite us out to their studio and let us go see the, what the clowns were looking like when they were carving them up. And so we got to be a little bit involved in the process. But I, I actually went on at least a half a dozen um, auditions for that movie. You know, th what they would do is they, the Kyoto brothers would bring us in and they'd put the camera on us and we would do the full scenes in like chairs like this, but acting it all out with like little props and everything like that. And then they'd have us go back out and then they'd bring in a new group. And they were basically just trying to figure out the, the right chemistry, you know, and did that over and over again. And you'd think, oh God, I'm either gonna find out I got this job or I didn't get this job. And then they'd bring you in again and I just wanted to mix and match again some more. And uh, as it turned out, you know, I had blonde hair at the time, right? And, and uh, John Allen Nelson, who I'd come in and we'd switch parts and done all sorts of things. So they finally figured out they wanted both of us, but they didn't want to have two blonde guys in the same movie. So they said, they looked at me and they said, okay, you've got to dye your hair like dark. And I was like, what? And they said, yeah, yeah, actually, you know, Mike Tobacco is a real guy and he, you know, he grew up in our neighborhood with us. So, we, you know, we want you to look like him anyway. So it's perfect. So I still remember they, 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 it was the first time I'd ever had, any, had a movie where they dyed my hair and it, it, you know, they dyed it like dark, dark brown. And I, I remember being in that chair and the, uh, the guy, the, the, it was like acid burning my head off. I was like, sc like screaming. I mean, it, I'm surprised I had any hair left after they put that <laughs> in my head. Come on, let's go check it out. Oh, come on, no way. Debbie, it's a waste of time. It's gotta be a thousand miles away. We've been all whole evening. Stephen Kyoto had such an image of how he wanted the guy to be. He, he wanted him to be really emotional and over the top, you know, I mean, um, you know, and I had kind of was at that place as a young, you know, trying to be a serious actor where, you know, I wanted everything to be really like, you know, Marlon Brando-ish and serious. And he was like, no, 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 I want you clowns, they're coming. So he was always pushing me up and up and up and up. And uh, you know, you've, you've kind of got to trust your director. And um, uh, you, know, he, it, you know, that movie, as we all know, it's not about great acting performances. It's about fitting into this vision that the Kyoto Brothers had, right? And so I really, you know, so the actors are really, they're playing very kind of archetypal parts that are reminiscent of all the old sci-fi monster invader from Mars movies that they loved growing up where everybody was overacting a little bit. So he knew exactly what he wanted and I just trusted him even though it felt you know, completely unreal to me when I was doing it. But I think it, when I watch the movie now, if I can remove myself somewhat from, you know, from looking at myself, and I can just kind of see what they were creating, it all seems to work, you know what I mean? It, it does feel like that, uh, that old school uh, invader from outer space, slightly overacting kind of thing. Dave! Oh my God, something horrible's happened! Somebody's been killed! Wait a second, Debbie, what happened? You gotta help us, we gotta do something! There are two people dead! Who, Debbie, who's dead? Joe Lombardo, he's dead! And, and, and it's a old man, too! So wait a second, guys, are you sure about this? Uh, yes, he, he, they, were, they were hanging there, wrapped up in these cotton candy things, these cocoons! We, you know, we didn't really know each other, we all just kind of arrived there about a week early, we shot the whole movie up in kind of the Santa Cruz, Aptos area of uh, just south of San Francisco. And uh, you know, everybody was great, but the funny thing is is those two, those two kind of bonded and kind of created a little relationship off camera. I don't know if it, not necessarily romantic, but they kind of like bonded closely. Uh, and uh, so, so I you know, was a little bit of the odd man out in the threesome, you know what I mean? 
Um, but I had a great time doing it, and, and uh, Suzanne, uh, we actually have become a thousand times closer in recent years, especially since we've kind of gone to the conventions and things like that. I mean, we're grown-ups now. We were kids then. Uh, but I think, I mean, like I said, we didn't have any, any real difficulty with each other, but I think as we, we, as we got to know each other as, as older adults, we kind of liked each other a lot more. The house right up, uh... Shit, what is that? Uh -oh. One of the trips about that movie is we shot that entire movie pretty much at nighttime, you know, because the whole movie takes place in one night. So, uh... You know, we would shoot until the sun came up. And I remember I'd go back to my apartment. I became really good friends with this guy uh, named Mark Borofsky, who was like the prop guy. And he became my buddy. And he was a local hire up there. And, and uh, you know, so most of the time after we got off, we'd go back to, our, to, to my condo. I had this kind of condo that eventually, later years when a big earthquake fell down the hill. <laughs> but we had Pong, you remember Pong, this boom, boom game. And we would play that. And, until we got exhausted and fell asleep. And, but, um, they, so this sound stage, they had built almost out of like thin plywood, that entire inner part of the spaceship. And, uh, and it was pretty wild. I mean, literally they'd gone and painted all of those things and they had, they had uh, you know, the real balloon pit and the twirly work things. And every day there was something, there was something kooky and new. So it was, it was neat. Hurry, hurry, step right up. See the Circus Bizarro! Come on, come on, step right up, little lady. Don't be shy, don't be stupid. Come see the incredible Miss 5050, half man, half woman. The perfect double date. There's a scene when I first go into the spaceship where I had to do this whole thing uh, where I'm kind of pretending like I'm a circus barker. And that thing just gave me fits, you know? I mean, that, that's, that particular scene I mean, I almost like melted down. I had such a hard time on that scene because uh, I hey, wanted to be so big, and there he is, the you know, the bearded lady, and all that kind of stuff. But overall, it was the whole thing was pretty was pretty much fun. It wasn't it wasn't huge things, but that for for some reason that particular scene because it was so big and over the top, uh, you know, it kind of gave me fits. That's my little lady. Step right up here and see Gumbo, the toothless elephant. <laughs> Oh, right over here, we've got Belinda, the Billy McWonder. Watch her binge and purge before your very eyes. <laughs> there was a thing, I don't know if it's still around, but it was called, it was like the Academy of Science Fiction Arts and Sciences kind of thing. And they had a screening down at, uh, in the afternoon, I still remember, down at USC, at a big, at a big theater down in USC. And uh, we all went there and, um, we, you know, we, we thought it was a trip. We thought it was really neat. And uh, it did get a little, it did get a very short theatrical release. Um, I remember going the opening night with friends and uh, we all watched it at the theater up on, uh, at a theater up on Hollywood Boulevard. And, um, and then the movie got kind of pulled and it was kind of, here today, gone tomorrow. I was like, ah, oh, that's too bad. You know, we we all thought that movie was so neat and so cool, and and uh, didn't. And then, ironically, that you know, the movie that I had made a few years before that, I call it Hard Bodies. It kind of gained this big cult status, and all of a sudden, you know, like everybody that you know that that movie kind of took off and became very very popular. And then the then something really strange happened is that Hard Bodies started to kind of play its course and die out. And all of a sudden, people would come up to me and go, dude, you're Mike Tobacco. And like somehow, the Hard Bodies, which was so popular and Killer Clowns was off the radar, they started to switch. And, and Hard Bodies became less and less. And Killer Clowns, to this day, I think it's still gaining popularity. I don't think it's ever reached an apex, which was a trip. So it started out real slow. It took like a few years before anybody really ever, really ever knew what it was. And then it started playing on late night TVs and started to build up a following. And um, and uh, I mean, I think Killer Clowns is probably more popular today than it has ever been. It's continuously, uh, it was so unique that it took its time finding its audience, but it's, the audience is still growing, I think. You know, people come up to me and, uh, 
and sh they've got their entire legs or arms or backs with killer clowns on them, and they tell me it's their favorite movie of all time. You know, actually, um, one, of my, one of my friends, shout out to Aaron Robinson, he's a, he's a fantastic visual effects guy and chef and, and uh, musician and all sorts of things, but we became friends. I was actually auditioning him for this kind of crazy cooking show we were doing. I needed, I needed kind of a rock and roll chef. And I, he couldn't see me, I'm behind the camera like this, filming him, you know, doing an audition with him, right? It, kind of like you are now, but I was holding it up to my face and all of a sudden he goes, wait a second, I know that voice. You are Mike Tobacco, oh my God! And, and uh, he's, you know, that's my favorite movie of all time. And um, it's so funny because he starts saying dialogue, he knows every single word of the entire movie. He's seen it 200 times. and. And he's now one of my, you know, dearest friends. And uh, but, you know, he still says to me, he goes, you know, Grant, like you could die happy right now. I could die happy if I had done one accomplishment like Killer Clowns. <laughs> and I like laughed at it. But it's neat that it's ha like that. That there are people. There's there are a lot of people that it's had that much of an impact on. And I think in just a way that's just pure fun. Do, do you think it's over? Yeah, sure. <laughs>